So these are some of the common barriers to the implementation of interprofessional care that are discussed in the literature. Uh, not the least of which is the limited training of the current healthcare workforce, meaning people are not ready or prepared for interprofessional team-based care because many of them have not been trained in IP care when they were going through as students and trainees. And that's what we're here to change. That's what we're doing right now. Attitudinal, uh, educational, uh, siloed education, right? Um, this is also something we're trying to break down here at Downstate with the Bridge Program, bringing all the colleges and schools together to train together. System-based barriers. Systems exist in, and have existed sometimes for many years in their current structure, and there's a certain inertia uh, that happens within a system, and it takes time to change those things. And of course, cost. There will be some startup cost, but as we've seen, the outcomes often dictate that cost improves over the long term once you've implemented these models of care. And of course, human resources. Geriatricians are uh, somewhat surprisingly scarce resources. Um, and so bringing in together a trained team of geriatricians uh, across the different professions uh, can be somewhat challenging. But the outcomes are really, really important and, and positive. And so this is what you have to include if you're developing a business plan or a model of care in your environment, your care environment. Professional satisfaction is improved. Doctors, nurses, social workers, dietitians, PTO, TPA, so everybody feels happier when they operate in this environment because they think they're doing better for patients. Patient satisfaction is improved. Quality of care, pain, fall incidence goes down. Quality of life goes up. Independence uh, of patients, depression and behavior are decreased transitions uh, of care and length of stay, hospital, um, hospital length of stay and readmissions are all improved. Uh, cost of care is decreased in, in many cases. So back to our patient uh, to wrap up her case. So while planning uh, her care, she suffered another fall in the home, fracturing her left wrist. So now we have a right fracture and a left fracture. And she was admitted to the hospital. She received alcohol detox in the hospital and was referred for outpatient substance treatment. APS, Adult Protective Services, got involved after the team notified APS that they were concerned regarding neglect uh, by her children and home safety and was eventually enrolled in a pilot nursing home diversion program providing her with 24-hour home health care services. So the team did what they had to do. This, this is a case that had to be perhaps promoted to Adult Protective Services attention so that we could get everyone on board and make sure that a safe plan was put in place. Um, we had to have the government basically involved in our interprofessional team. And then we took a look at all of those four M's, mobility, medication, mentation, and of course what matters, and we found a way through the system that allowed the patient to have her most important goal, to stay at home where she raised her kids and lived with her husband for 60 years really, really important. And uh, as of this presentation, she's still living at home with her home health aides. Thank you for coming today, and I hope I've stimulated your thinking about interprofessional teams and the interprofessional care of older adults. Uh, we look forward to seeing you in clinic and discussing your answers to the questions from the brainstorms today.